In some earlier videos, I explained what is LoRa and LoRaWAN. I also developed some LoRa devices using Arduino, ESP8266, ESP32, and STM32 microcontrollers. Then we transfer data wirelessly through point-to-point -point communication. We did a lot of wireless communication with LoRa nodes. But today, we will learn about the LoRa gateway. Instead of point-to-point -point communication, the communication will be done by a LoRa gateway. So, what basically LoRa gateway is? The LoRa gateway are radio modules that serves as communication devices with a LoRa network between N devices and LoRa 1 network server. One of the most popular network server is the Things network. Coming to the gateway part, the most popular LoRa 1 gateway is manufactured by Dragino. Some of the widely used Dragino gateways are LIG16, LPS8, LG01, LG308, OLG02 and some others. Here in this video, we'll take LPS8 LoRa 1 gateway as a reference. We'll first set up a gateway and establish a Wi-Fi connection with the gateway. Then we'll register the gateway on the Things Network server so that it will receive the data from the LoRa nodes. All the process is explained in detail in this video. So watch it till very end so that you can set up your own gateway. Now, without getting any further delay, let's get started. Do you want professional PCB like this one that looks so good? Then use the services of Next PCB. You can select the board size, any solder color marks that you want, including something like red and green. You can select the thickness. And the PCB could be from 2 to 32 layers for some more complex design. The finish quality is so good and if you want better connectivity, you could also select some gold finish for the pads. The ordering process is so easy. Just go to nextpcb.com then quit now. Insert your design setting, upload your cardboard file and order now. And receive the PCB in couple of days. Welcome back again. This is the LPS8 indoor LoRa 1 gateway that I purchased a couple of days ago from China. As mentioned here, it is a LoRa 1 Pico station with a frequency of 868 MHz. You can buy the gateway according to the frequency bands available in your country. Let me unbox it and show you what is inside the box. So, this is the gateway box. This one is a LoRa antenna of 868 MHz frequency. A USB cable for powering the gateway, then a USB adapter of 5V DC output. Coming to the gateway part, this gateway is used for indoor applications only and is beginner's level gateway so that you can get started with your IoT project. On the back side, the details of the gateway like model number as LPS8, frequency band, serial number and the Wi-Fi MAC address is available. This is the cap where you can attach the LoRa antenna. On this side, a 5 volt 2 ampere power port is given, then an Ethernet port, a USB port and a toggle switch for resetting the gateway. Now, first connect the antenna to the gateway. This is a standard antenna that comes with the gateway. If you want to increase the range, you can use a better powerful antenna. To power this gateway, Use this 5 volt DC power supply from the adapter. The power rating of the adapter should be 5 volt 2 ampere. The red LED on the gateway will indicate that the gateway is powered on. Apart from this, there are 4 LED indications that indicate the different status of the gateway. The LoRa LED will look like a Wi-Fi symbol, which blinks green if it is transmitting a packet. Then it has a network LED which is an RGB LED. If it's solid blue, it means the device is alive with LoRa 1 server connection. If it is blinking blue, then it states no LoRa 1 connection or the gateway is in booting stage. The solid red color of the LED indicates it has no internet connection. The Ethernet LED shows that the connection status with the Ethernet cable. Now let's see. How we can provide internet access to this gateway? For this, there are three methods. The first method is connect via Wi-Fi. The second method is to connect via Ethernet with DHCP IP from the router. 
The third method is to connect via Wi-Fi with DHCP IP from router. In case, if all the method fails, you can still configure the LPS8 with the fallback IP on the WAN port. Out of all this, the easiest and the best method is the first one, which is connect via Wi-Fi. The gateway is configured as a Wi-Fi access point by factory default. On your computer, go to Wi-Fi and then you can see a Wi-Fi network with the name Dragino and something. So connect to this network. The password is Dragino plus Dragino. After a successful connection, open any of the web browser. Then browse to the following IP 10.130.1.1. A web page like this will appear. Enter the username as root and password as Dragino. Then hit enter. A web page like this will appear again. The login page will show the internet connectivity status. If it is connected to the internet, whether it is Wi Fi or Ethernet. The web page will also show the status of LoRa 1 connection, the LoRa connection, and the SS point connection. At this moment, the Dragino gateway doesn't have an internet connection. So, first, we need to configure the gateway as a client by providing the Wi Fi credential. To do that, go to network and click on Wi Fi. From Wi Fi survey option, choose the Wi Fi you would like to connect. Also, enter the Wi Fi password. Then click on Save and Apply. The Wi Fi status OK message will appear as green. Now, from the top, you can disable the SS point. But once you disable the SS point, you need to get the IP of the gateway from the Wi Fi router and log in with the same IP. As you can see here, now the Wi Fi connection is enabled. Now go to the LoRa option. From here, select the frequency plan. As I am in Europe, now I will choose the European frequency band of S63 to 870 MHz. For you, you can select the frequency band allocated in your region. Hit save and apply. Now click on LoRa 1 and select Semtec UDP. Here the most important thing is the gateway ID. Copy this gateway ID as this will be required later. You can also modify or make changes to your gateway ID. In the LoRa 1 server, select the Things Network v3 and the server address as eu1.cloud.things.network. Now again hit save and apply. So the gateway setup part is done. Now open a new tab and search for the Things Network. Click on the first link. The page for the Things Network will open up. Now you need to sign up and create an account here. From here, select an individual or a student. Then we'll need to select a network cluster. You can select the nearest network cluster. In my case, I'll select Europe. Then a page will again appear which will ask you to create a Things Console account. So again, create an account here with a username and email address. Once the account is created, you can log into the account using the same email and password. A confirmation email will be sent asking for activation. So the account is activated now. Now go to the home page and from the console click on the gateway. Here you need to register a gateway. From here add a gateway, give any name to the gateway ID, then enter gateway UI here. You can get the gateway. EUI from the gateway setup page that I explained earlier. Just copy the gateway ID and paste it here. Give any names to the gateway. You can also add a description if you want. Gateway server address. Enter the correct gateway server address. The same one you used earlier in the gateway login page. Go down and select the frequency plan. I will select Europe 863 to 870 MHz which is SF9 for RX2. This means it has a 9 channel. Leave everything default and then click on create a gateway. So the gateway is successfully created now. But the status shown here is disconnected. So wait for some time and then refresh the page. 
so here you can see the connection status and the last activity timing now your gateway is ready and successfully connected to receive the packet from load onwards when you click here you will get the information related to events and their details one thing you need to check is the LoRa frequency at which the gateway is operating. To find out that, check the LoRa log page on the LoRa page. So here are all the frequency and the spreading factor in details. You can use this frequency in the coding of LoRa nodes. So that's all from the LoRa gateway part. All the information related to the LoRa gateway and the setup details has also been discussed in the website articles of How to Electronics. You can follow up on the written tutorial as well. In case you have any questions, comment down in the comment section below. Thank you so much for watching. Please drop a like and subscribe to our channel for more such interesting videos.